Namaste, my name is François Gauthier. I'm a French journalist and writer living in India. <clears throat> I've been working for many, many uh, magazines and newspapers from France, among them Le Figaro. <clears throat> I have written many books on India and South Asia and the Dalai Lama. My latest uh, entirely new history of India rewrites Indian history as it happened from prehistoric time till today, till Mr. Modi. So I'm privileged to live in India and I privileged to defend India abroad that India should be the preferred destination to the, of the West for economic and geopolitical investment. So far, I haven't been too successful, although Mr. Modi's preview, last visit to France on the 14th of July seemed to be an opening, a beginning of the West looking at India as an important nation where it is good to invest and it is good to have a security cooperation. Today, I would like to talk about India as a soft power. Someone asked me the question, can Hinduism, so I have been known to be a defender of Hindus for many, many years. I do not know of many Western journalists who defend Hindus. In fact, I know of none. Mark Tully was supposed to be, but I was in Mark, with Mark Tully in Kashmir, and he was definitely more pro Kashmiri Muslim than Kashmiri Hindu. So I don't think he's one. Now, can Hinduism help India become a soft power? Yes, yes, of course, because what is propping up Hinduism, the ancient spirituality that props up Hinduism, what does it say? It says that God is universal, that God may manifest, he or she, the Hindus have this wonderful concept of the Shakti, that God is Shakti, the energy, that uh, without that Shakti, God cannot manifest himself, that God can manifest himself or herself at different times using different names and different scriptures. Thus, for a Hindu, even today, many Hindus, the, the simple Hindus, not the Hindus you find in Delhi maybe or Bombay, the simple Hindu, for him or her, God can be Krishna or Mohammed or Jesus Christ or Buddha or Zarathustra. So this is a universal soft concept you know, that I am a Muslim, but I accept that there may be other religions and I respect these religions. I'm a Christian and I accept that, you know, though I remain a Christian, I accept that they can be Hindu, they can be Buddhist, they can be uh, the Zoroastrians and I respect them. So this is a soft concept that can ensure a future world where nobody fights, where all people, all nationalities, all religions cohabit together peacefully and harmoniously. The second soft concept of Hinduism is the world is one family. Uh, uh, the translation is Vasundava Kutumbakam. Uh, Mr. Modi has taken up this concept in, in modern times, it's a very ancient concept, and applied it to the present G20 meet, which is scheduled in September where leaders from all, all over the world will come to Delhi and meet together and try to find some harmony. So, so this one world family is also a very soft concept that can help the world develop into a global community. Now, unfortunately, <coughs> we see at the moment that the world is in the strife, there is a major war happening between Ukraine and Russia, and the entire world is on one side or the other. The, most of the Western world led by United States on the side of Ukraine. And there are a few countries which are neutral, like India. And there are countries like China who support uh, the, the Rus Russian. We see also that in India, India cannot be a soft country at the moment because uh, it faces threats not only from Pakistan, which has nuclear weapons and has made no secret that it could use them eventually in a war against uh, India, but also China is a more redoubtable, a more deadly enemy, which also has nuclear weapon much more powerful, which is encroaching upon the Himalayas uh, repeatedly, which is claiming huge chunks of Indian territory, like Arunachal Pradesh, where I have been a wonderful, wonderful state, and which is a very hostile uh, nation, even in the seas, 
controlling the sea lanes between the China Sea and the Indian Ocean. So India needs to be armed, India needs to be strong, and there again we find wisdom. We go back to the Bhagavad Gita and we see there that Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, you must fight for goodness, you must fight the enemy, you do not kill the body, you kill the body but you do not kill the soul. The soul, that spark of the divine in us is eternal and is reborn from life to life, from life to life. Thus, when you kill someone, as it is your duty, your dharma, because you need to defend your borders, your nations, your women, the goodness, it is your karma to fight, it is your karma to kill, so go to battle. So there again we find in ancient wisdom, ancient scriptures, the need today to stand up because India, India needs to be a powerful nation. It cannot be a soft nation at the moment. So this is why I think that Hinduism might be the future religion of the world, not Hinduism as we know it today with its rituals and you know, temples, but the spirituality which is behind Hinduism, particularly its tools, meditation, anybody can meditate. If you're a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, just close your eyes, repeat the name of your God, or repeat a mantra, or just visualize your God. Anybody can meditate. Pranayama, the ancient science of breathing, also born in India, that helps you to control your emotions through your breath. And again, as Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, a modern guru says, Breath has no religion. The air around you has no religion. Anybody can breathe that air and use it to promote himself or herself. Whether you're a Muslim or Hindu or Christian or Buddhist, that air is the same for everybody. And finally, Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga today is practiced all over the world. It also comes from the Hindus. It's an ancient Hindu practice. So these three tools, along with that knowledge of, you know, the world is one family and we need to fight when necessary, can become the future religion of the world. Namaste.